Phillips make up the backcourt. And for Chicago, their frontcourt, Lou Aldang, Carlos Boozer, and Joaquin Nolan in the middle. Derek Rose runs the show with Rib Hamilton to the side. Exclamation point right there, guys. That was a strong throwdown finish. It was, and a little extra face time as he eats. Oh, look out. Oh, 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 oh. It wasn't bad defense, but he got overpowered. Just not enough strength to stop him. You know, sometimes you just try to avoid the foul, Clark, and not get in the way. Wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no question. You guys are right. I mean, he seemed to think better of it and then backed off a little bit at the end. And the replay, of course, presented by Sprite. What a play. Phillips goes in, lets it go from 11, and a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Phillips has got his first basket. The thing I love about Chris Paul offensively is the great job he does of balancing his own scoring with setting up his teammates. And when he scores, uh, the Clippers are so difficult to defend because then you have to commit defenders to him, and that's when he starts getting the ball to his teammates. Right side, Butler. Phillips, a screen on deck. Here's Butler. Hamilton with some nice deep. And they force the miss with that good defensive rotation. They're playing well together as a unit. And the dunk by Rose. What a talented leaper. Loves to climb up and throw it down. Man. Oh, Clark, he gets up so quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's like a pogo stick. Oh, my gosh. Not a lot of point guards in the league can shame like he can. That's for sure. And he's able to finish, guys, amongst all the big fellas in the paint. Just amazing athleticism. And you mentioned Chris Paul's great passing last season, playing in Los Angeles, even with more help offensively. Clark, his points went up and his assists went down. You know, but part of that, it was rumored the New Orleans scorekeepers there were a little generous with how they notched his assist total. His passing is still terrific. Um, perhaps just graded a little differently, Kevin. You know, that is something that goes on, how assists are totaled from arena to arena. You know, Kevin, they were a step late on their defensive rotation, and that helped them get right to the rim. Rose against Paul. Kick out to Hamilton. Open look. Yes, and it's Rose with the assist that time. Hamilton's got his first two points of the night. They're coming out strong, guys. That's four for five from the field. And the Bulls, as usual, were so tough at home last year, and it's a trend that's been building for quite a while now. I mean, they're just incredibly tough to beat when they play in front of their fans. Boy, that was a heck of a catch on that pass, and then to lay it up and in, all in one motion. That's about as graceful as it gets, huh? Splendid. Mm. And I like that he just went with a simple layup instead of trying to do anything too fancy. He just got the job done. The three from Phillips. It's hauled in by Lou Aldang. Second best record at home in the East for the Bulls, Steve. When you have the defensive presence they have in front, a friendly crowd, uh, you know, that goes right along with it. Boy, that can lock up an opposing team. The other thing that helps you have a good home record is taking care of the ball, and they did that extremely well at home, Kevin. Second best turnover rate in the league in that category. So really just a very sound team. Nothing flashy, but very solid. Here's Boozer. Oh, yes, the turnaround. You have to love the fact that they created an excellent shot. Of course, Burke has some information. for his Doris. Kevin, I briefly had a chance to catch up with Vinny Del Negro. This will be their first game of the season against Chicago, and they know they'll be dealing with one of the best rebounding teams in the league. He said this is one of these games that test you. Guys have to box out every trip, every shot, or things can go bad in a hurry. We'll learn a lot about where we are as a team. Let's see if they can match the Bulls on the glass, guys. Thank you, Doris. So Chicago ends up going with the new group. Big group substitution here for the Clippers. Lamar Odom has checked in for DeAndre Jordan. Hill comes in for Karan Butler. 
Jamal Crawford. He's checked in for John C. Billups. Eric Bledsoe is subbed in for Chris Paul. Now you look at Vinny Del Negro, spent some time in the Phoenix Suns front office as a scout before moving on to the coaching ranks when he landed that first job with the Chicago Bulls. Passes it to Crawford. Dishes to Griffin. And he uses both hands to jam it in. Watch out below. Get out of his way now. No way that he was going to slow him down. Not that time. They weren't about to take those points away from him. For the Clippers, Butler comes in for Grant Hill, and it's Paul in for Eric Bledsoe. And Steve, you go back to Vinny Del Negro, a scout for the Suns prior to coaching. He was also in broadcasting. Yeah, he's been around the game forever. Uh, you know, a lifer. His father was a coach. Uh, you know, it's in his blood. He actually grew up just outside of Springfield, Massachusetts, the home of the Hall of Fame. So Vinny, I guess, is just meant to be in basketball. What a play. No regular dunk there. A superb alley-oop. And it was a great pass, too, to set him up. You know, those two have such a great feel for each other. Uh, they're just fun to watch play together. Back to Odom. At the lead pass. And Paul with the basket on the assist by Odom. Paul's got his second basket. Attacking the paint again and again. You know, they're getting whatever they want. I mean, eight straight points coming inside. Now Gibson, right now averaging seven points a game. And it's Rose penetrating. No good from Gibson. Here's Paul. No good. And so lots of scoring in that competitive first quarter. Six. Coming up next Monday, Al Jeff. So far, it's been a closely contested game as we get the second quarter up and going. And guys, what's your take on the Bulls so far? I was impressed with their transition game, guys. They really got out and ran the lanes. Yeah, they did. I mean, no better way to get easy buckets than through fast break. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter to play. So the Bulls five right now. Down low, it's Gibson and Noah. Rose and Rip Hamilton man the backcourt. And it's Dang in at the small fold. Phillips dishes to Butler. Now the feed to Paul. Shot clock at five. Griffin kicks to Paul. Over Rose. Rose with some nice D. What a roller coaster ride it was for Chris Paul last season. Traded originally from New Orleans to the Lakers. That deal was rescinded. Then he was moved to the Clippers, where, of course, he teamed with Blake Griffin to form one of the highlight reel duos in the NBA. The dish to Billings. Covered by Hamilton. Goes up the baseline. And Griffin slams it in. Well, he's an effort guy, Kevin. And so often his points come from second or third chance opportunities by hitting the glass and really staying relentless in his pursuit of the basketball. And don't forget now, a walking highlight reel every time he steps on the court. This flair for the dramatic makes him worth the price of admission all by himself. And going back to the Chris Paul trade saga, you know, it's so unusual to have one trade veto, then end up in the same town and in the same arena, but on a different team. That was, that was a weird story. Yeah, and I think it's fed into the rivalry between the Lakers and Clippers, quite honestly, Kevin. I mean, you're right. It was very unique and weird and strange and funky, but I think it's fueled what looks to be a rivalry that'll last for a while in L.A. And Doris Burke has a report for us from the sideline. Well, Kevin, the Chicago Bulls for the last two seasons have been the best rebounding team in the league by a wide margin. Coach Tom Thibodeau still isn't satisfied. He said, there's still work to be done, but we're moving in the right direction. Our smalls are getting in there. We're making a conscious effort of rebounding with five guys. The message apparently is getting through, gentlemen. Well, Doris, you haven't gotten a stop till you secure the ball. They're all about those stops. A slight advantage for them in the rebound category. They've got to continue their work on the glass. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, they're on the right side of the ledger, and that is all that matters to them right now with the lead they have. Clippers trail by six. The Clippers had a number of guards at the beginning of the season, and a lot of those guys were point guards, and eventually they found the best rotation for those guards. Left side Boozer. 
passes it to Dak. Boozer. Odom's there. Good look. Dang passes to Muhammad. Boozer guarded by Jordan. Boozer with a screen for Heinrich. Back to Boozer. That's good. And the Bulls lead by six. Back of the Clippers, sometimes they had to go a little bit small, running two guards. In fact, two point guards, but Steve worked out overall for them. And I think the reason it works, Kevin, is that those guards, despite their lack of height, were very smart and very strong. I mean, you look at Chris Paul, Eric Bledsoe as well. Uh, those guys are able to, to guard players taller than them because of their immense strength. Paul can't get it to go. He may want to start spreading the ball around a little bit. His shot is off right now. Rose dishes to Butler. Hamilton outside. Rose. Kicks to Noah. And stolen by Butler. And here is Paul. Averaging 20 points per game. Fluff. Offensive rebound. Jordan kicks to Hill. From out on the wing, he knocks it down. The Bulls leading by four. Rose goes in. The kick outside to Butler. Right side, Rose. Over Butler. Rose, good. Rose has got four points in the quarter. You can't fault what he's been doing out there. Some really impressive shooting. Paul is doubled. Outside, Butler. Right side, Jordan. Some nice ball movement by the Clippers. Crawford's shot is good. Offensively just hammering away in the paint. And that's 10 straight points inside, too. Rose, no good. You can see how much the defense respects him. I mean, they were all over him on that look. Paul goes in over Hamilton. The kick outside to Butler. He dishes it to Crawford. Back to Butler. He kicks it to Crawford. Paul left side. Over Butler. It's blocked. And it's out of bounds. The Clippers able to retain possession here. Here's Crawford. And out of bounds as the Bulls gain possession. And we're through two here and a good one. Bulls lead by four. We'll get right back to the action when we return. And now, brought to you by Sprint. Thanks for being with us here on 2K Sports. Every day, the playoff picture is becoming more clear. The Bulls have been rolling along. At every opportunity, they're pushing it on the break and looking to run it down the opponent's throat. Derek Rose playing impressively so far. He's got 10 points and is also sharing the ball, picking up assists as well. On the Clippers side of things, they're managing to hang around. They've been getting roundly outplayed up to this point. They'll need a bounce back effort to make up for it in the second half. A trying first half for Jamal Crawford. Another ragged shooting game for him. He's had more than a few lately. And it's time now to head back to the rest of the game in Chicago. See you next time.